What's good? This is Marcus DeFingas, D-A-F-I-N-G-A-Z, and I am a music composer, producer. Uh, I've worked on projects for Disney, um, MTV, Fox, the stars, um, and I talk about sync licensing and trailer music, and this is the Secrets to Success podcast day. 12, one, two. Um, in this episode, we're going to explore the ever-evolving world of sync licensing trends. As composers, we need to stay ahead of the curve. That is essential to capturing new opportunities or seizing new opportunities and captivating our audiences with our music. So let's start by figuring out how can we identify current trends in the sync licensing and popular uh, music styles that are in visual media today. Um, The industry is dynamic, it's ever changing, uh, and to keep a pulse on the latest trends, that can give us valuable insights into what music supervisors uh, and directors are seeking. So you have genres like indie pop, uh, electronic, um, rock, ambient, uh, hip hop, drill, all kinds of music, even country in some cases, folk, um, and they continue to have a strong presence in advertising campaigns, movies, uh, television, um, social media, and new styles are emerging every day that we should explore, including blending multiple styles. So analyzing successful sync placements can provide us with valuable lessons um, by observing the uh, music used in commercials, films, TV shows, uh, and online content that resonates with the audience. What emotional qualities and instrumentation do these compositions possess? That's what people want to hear when they're turning on content. And we have to understand the appeal that will help us craft our music that connects deeply with the visual narrative and with the audience. So it sounds like a lot, but we have a lot to do with our music. Um, Forecasting emerging opportunities and music preferences is a skill that can set us apart. For me personally, doing trailers and specifically trailerizations, because that's what I'm leaning into. I believe after, at the time of this recording, there is a writer strike um, and an actor strike going on. And I believe once we come out of that, there's going to be a huge push for new content. Um, Hopefully these writers um, are working on content even after they're striking and uh, maybe they're starting their own companies or whatever the case may be. And there will be more opportunities for specifically trailer tracks and trailerizations to land on the new properties that come out, the new films and TV shows and things like that. Forecasting these properties are a skill that will set us apart. We have to stay informed about industry events, networking, film festivals, cultural movements, there's a strike, um, that may influence sync licensing demands, such as sports. Will sports ever end? Probably not. So getting music synced in sports can be a huge revenue or income stream for us. And we have to keep an eye on new media platforms. You know, maybe 20 years ago, I don't think we had all these streaming platforms, did we? So new media platforms, new streaming platforms, streaming services, because they present us with new avenues for sync placements and getting our music heard. The impact of technological advances uh, cannot be underestimated by us. The rise of AI, artificial intelligence, um, algorithms in content creation, curation, um, that alters the way that music is discovered and selected for sync opportunities. We have to embrace technology that can help us adapt to these changes and leverage them to our advantage. Adapting our music to align with contemporary, which is current sync licensing demands, is a continuous process. We must remain open to experimentation and incorporate current trends without compromising our own personal artistic visions for our music. And you have to find that sweet spot between innovation and familiarity that is key to creating music that feels both fresh and relevant. As composers, embracing sync licensing trends with curiosity and adaptability can lead us to exciting new opportunities and continuously honing our craft and being aware of the ever-changing landscape will enable us to resonate with audience and leave uh, resonate with audiences and leave a lasting impression. I also want to share, um, I, I might have talked about this on a previous episode, one thing to do is look at advertising campaigns, look at the Super Bowl ads, look at the top Super Bowl ads that were placed this year um, and see what was the music. There are people like Billboard, there are companies like Billboard that an analyze Super Bowl ads, and that sort of sets the tone for advertising for the year, Super Bowl advertisements, um, where companies pay, you know, $5 million plus for a 30-second ad, which is insane, um, $7 million for 30 seconds or whatever the case is. So study those ads, study what's happening in the marketing space and um, visual media uh, campaigns, trailer campaigns. That's what I'm studying. I'm listening to trailers. Um, sometimes I'm listening to two, three hours of trailer music, uh, watching trailers every day, not just trailer music, just watching trailers two, three hours a day, um, because that is the input and that is my reference point. And then once you start working with libraries, you're going to start getting what's called references. And we'll probably talk about that in a later episode, but references is um, 
sound like almost like we want music that sounds like this but not so much like this that you can be sued for copyright so um infringement so you want to make sure that you know how to approach music creation um and make a sound alike or something that is inspired by another track because a lot of times we might get three or four references or maybe more sometimes i've gotten up to 20 references and just say hey we want music sort of like this um and you start have to figure out how to analyze those styles and figure out how you can put yourself into those already existing styles so there's a lot to take in when we are exploring the world of trends in the sync licensing space for ads um you know commercials trailers uh for film and tv shows and things like that so always keep your um ear to the ground keep your finger on the pulse um there are sites like i said that analyze super bowl ads there are sites that you can i believe iSpot tv is one where you can just look at ads and things like that so um and then of course you can always go to youtube look up the uh ad um campaigns um there might be a, I'm, i wouldn't be i wouldn't be surprised if there aren't a playlist every week of the top ads of the week on youtube YouTube. Um, I'm going to YouTube, but I'm looking for the top trailers of the week. And I usually can find a one or two hour playlist every week of the top trailers that were released around the world for that week. So um, there should be something out there. It's find these um, avenues. And then, of course, use the references. Once you start working with libraries, use their references as a guideline to how you should be making your music, at least for that project or for them or for that brief. That will conclude day 12 of Secrets to Success. Come back tomorrow, day 13, where we'll talk about more about sync licensing as we continue this 30-day journey into sync. I will see you tomorrow. Again, this is Marcus DeFingas. Join the Facebook group. I'll have a link down in the description. Be safe and be well, everyone. All right? All right. Peace.